I'm very pleased to announce the second course for Tibetan calligraphy. For those of you who already studied with me the Tibetan alphabet, we now have the great opportunity to uh, learn all of the subscribed and superscribed letters which are essential to practice, to learn this discipline of Tibetan calligraphy. It's always a great pleasure to share all that's been taught to me. There's a great uh, interest in Buddhism, in the art of calligraphy. The Tibetan language has for a while now been on the UNESCO endangered language list. So to be able to contribute in my small way to keep this alive. But not only that, is to learn a, a discipline, to train the mind, to tame the mind, by writing in this way, by studying in this way, it helps to focus in this rather busy and overburdened world. So it's the careful, considered script. You have to think about each element of the letters mindfully. It comes from here rather than just in thinking about it. And we're taught to do the visualization, the image of the Buddha or the deity, which as we know, are based on very uh, formal, rigorous proportions, grid lines, to give this perfect harmony of sense of the Buddha, of the enlightened mind. And it's exactly the same for the calligraphy. In this next course then, uh, we're covering a lot, a lot more than just the 30 letters of the alphabet. Uh, there's, there's coming on 80 to 100 of these combination letters where we join, um, subscribe or superscribe uh, letters together of the yataks and the rataks and the langos and the sangos. There's all many, many different the wazus, um, many different groups. Then I'm teaching a little on the um, punctuation marks as well. Quite useful if we are reading the Tibetan manuscripts. We conclude the course writing and explaining the meaning as well of the, the famous Mani Mantra, the embodiment of loving kindness. And I often say good calligraphy is sings. It sings. It's, like, it's clarity. So that's perhaps what beauty is.